Hey guys! So, I thought I was going to talk to you a little bit about things to consider when you pick a tech stack. So, the thing is, whenever you start a new project, you have a few things to consider. And honestly, it's only in fairly recent time where I realized that there are more than a few things that you may have to consider when you pick your own pick what tools you're going to use and for the most part it's going to boil down to a few key things in my opinion that you should take into consideration whenever you're building something now the first and foremost import like the most important question you need to answer for yourself is are there any like technical limitations to what you're trying to build in other words like if you have if depending on what you're going to build it's very some th some tools are going to be better than other tools and some will actually not be able to do what it is that you need to do now a good example of this is if you want to create a say a application some type of api or it's like a, a basically a system that does a lot of complicated mathematics for example with like say computer science or machine learning or something like that then javascript would be a really really bad choice for example because of the technical limitations of that system and if you wanted to make i don't know something that works a lot with memory management and like really low level system type of things then you know, something like java wouldn't probably be the best thing for you or like elixir like there are so many like some languages are special specialized in solving certain problems but they solve those problems very well and some languages don't the, and I'm not saying that, you know, I mean, if you are making a web page or some t standardized web application, then it doesn't really matter what language you pick, then the other things are, are to be considered. But that's the first, like the first hard requirement. Make sure that you are, you, you understand what it is that you're, you're going to build and you understand that if there are any types type of technical limitations that you take those into account because it otherwise you won't you'll simply not be able to build the thing that you want to build so that's the first thing to consider the second thing to consider and this is probably even more important than anything else is that whenever you start a new project you're going to have to ask yourself what type of what type of life cycle you're facing here are you building something that is going to... Like, if you have a lot of experience using a certain type of language, let's say that you're a C-sharp guy or a, I don't know, something like... Or a Java guy or something like that, and you want to build something very quickly and like quick, quick and dirty, basically you needed to make a proof of concept or something like that, then you should absolutely you should not even consider other solutions in my opinion you shouldn't be thinking about all right is this is, is java if you're a java guy is java the right choice for this or should i maybe pick something else because whatever is going to get you the fastest forward like getting your like your project to a point where it's producing value for the people you're building it for that's the most important thing hands down because in the beginning like it doesn't matter if you pick the best language or whatever if it takes you too long to build something with it it's for the most part it's going to be more important for you to be able to move quickly with whatever it is that you need to to, to build so that brings us into the next things thing to consider which is are the tools that you're like if you are past that first initial here we have a proof of concept people believe in the idea we get some funding and you or you're building it for yourself and you're getting um, well you're, you're getting to a product that is a little bit more mature and you're maybe adding a few people to your project or you need to start scaling and this is where it gets tricky so 
when you're doing that you have to th this is something that you need to consider early on like what is going to be the what is going to be your scaling tactic or do you have a are you building a distributed system where you can use microservices or are you building one big mount monolithic application who's going to like what what's you going to be your hosting solution are you going to consider serverless or are you going with an avs instance or something or maybe digital ocean or other hosting services what are you going to do if uh, something you know when things crash and so forth? Like all these more scaly types of problems they come at a later stage but it's good to you know have them in the back of your mind because if you are build let, let's say that your application is say in php or something like that and you very heavily depend on the file system now that's a very bad I, th this is a very specific case but for the most part when it comes to scaling things and stuff of that nature there's a certain way to build your application so that it fits very nicely into the cloud so that's what you want to ask yourself are you going to the cloud because if you're going to the cloud the way that you build your application is going to have to be like try you have to fit it into a cloud infrastructure and so, certain things are better and certain things are worse for doing that and honestly, these are the main things to consider when you're starting out. So first and foremost, think about like what are your technical limitations? Ask yourself, what language do I feel the most comfortable with? Or what, what is the short-term best thing for me? Because trust me, don't, do my, don't make my mistakes. Don't go into like, don't start with microservices like for the first thing you do. Like build something that will work, that will do the job, a monolith, something like that get it up and running, get some people interested in, uh, to, and get that done first because the, it does like if you start trying to build something at the very from the get-go that is you know where you basically try to create an entire enterprise level application when you're just starting out it's going to take you so much time it's going to take so long to build it and to maintain it and run it and all that type of stuff. So le like transition into that later instead. Trust me, just do that. Don't don't start doing that from the start. Let it be a monolith and then when it when it met, it's mature enough to be split up into a microservice or whatever, do that afterwards. And then finally, make sure that like think about do you need to make this a cloud application yes or no. These are the main technical considerations to have with you when you're starting a new when you're picking your tech stack so as a side note i suppose this is a specific thing to maybe it's kind of touches on the whole moving quickly thing as well that is if you're making a web application of some sort or some or something similar that, like that when you have things such as different javascript frameworks what which one do you pick which one don't you pick the rule of thumb apply uh, the same rule of thumb applies there like ask yourself what is going to be the best fit for the thing that i'm making in other words if you have a very static web application with a lot of where, where it's basically a purchase flow like a web shop or something like that then maybe you you know don't use a like a javascript framework maybe just plain old html and css will be and maybe a little bit of vanilla javascript will be enough and if your application is really really standardized where it's like maybe like using a cms such as wordpress or django or something like that is going to be the best best bet for you so that this that's what i was uh, is tying into point number two i'm making ask yourself what is going to get me the quickest from having nothing to having something that is producing value and that that's that's probably that, that's the most important thing however if you're making a very dynamic like liquid ui type of thing like maybe you're making your own uh, browser email client like google mail or hotmail or something like that then yes maybe react is the way to go there because that's going to require a lot of javascript assistance so all those things are the things that you should consider and if the if you only take away a single thing from this little rant of mine 
start by asking yourself, how do I, as quickly as possible, get something to my users? Because all th that's going to help you the most.